In this section of notes, we're going to be talking about populations and biodiversity. Now, there's a few stems we need to go over to familiarize ourselves with some of the uh, terms we'll be looking at, such as eco. Now, eco refers to a house. And in this uh, instance, it's really referring to the earth as our home. Now, logi refers to study of. Al refers to having the character of. Bio is a review. We talked about that one before. That's life. And then also sphere, as you might imagine, is referring to a ball or round. And in this case, also referring to the earth. Now, if we combine these together and look at ecological, ecological is having the character of earth study. In other words, it's the study of the ecosystems of the Earth. Now, an ecosystem is an Earth system. It's a part uh, in the, we'll learn more about this in, in a second, but we can just define it as Earth system for now. And biosphere is life on a ball. In other words, this is the living area on planet Earth. So now let's go ahead and continue. We'll move on, first of all, taking a look at ecological hierarchy, okay? We're gonna define some terms here. A biosphere, that was something we mentioned before. That is the portion of the earth that supports life and the global sum of all ecosystems. So when we look at this picture here of planet earth, we can see here that this whole thing really um, supports life. Um, the entire surface of it. We're even finding kilometers deep into the earth, we're finding bacteria. So the whole planet really supports living systems. Now, when we reveal the remainder of the terms here, we can see that we're going from a large biosphere now kind of going down, to narrow, more narrowing that down to ecosystem, which is the combined physical and biological components of an environment. In the next unit, we're going to learn about a whole bunch of ecosystems, such as the polar ecosystems, um, coral reef ecosystems. Um, and within each of those ecosystems, you've got a community. So a community is a group of interacting populations from different species. So, And then also, within a community, you have a population. Now, a population is a collection of uh, interbreeding organisms from a particular species. So it's only one particular species. So the point here is that as we go down the hierarchy, we're getting from a more broad in general for the biosphere to a narrow population. And there's several populations in a community, several communities within an ecosystem, and then of course several ecosystems on Earth making up the biosphere. Now, let's talk about how, how it is that populations grow. Populations grow typically as exponential. It is typically, uh, it grows at an, increasing fa uh, an increasingly faster rate. As you can see in this J curve here that we saw, this is a, basically the population starts growing pretty slowly here. And then as it gets more numerous, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And that's what we saw, or what we see in the human population. Now, usually in the, in the environment, something puts a limit on those populations. And that's where we get the carrying capacity. A carrying capacity is the total number of individuals a habitat can support. And if you look at the blue curve that was just drawn on the screen, that shows the effects of this carrying capacity limiting the population. No longer does the curve shoot straight up the graph. Now it kind of levels out. And typically we call this an S curve. So an unchecked population, such as the human population, will continue to grow up like the red curve. And that is what we call a J curve. Now, in a regulated population with a carrying capacity, it levels out uh, to, to a certain cap, you could say, of individuals. And that's what we call the carrying capacity. Now, growth, as we've mentioned, is typically exponential, but how is it that organisms can reproduce? What strategies do they use to either reproduce really quickly or slowly? Well, let's take a look at these two main reproductive strategies. The first one is what we call our selection. In our selection, it is a, a species will produce many offspring at one time. 
This is a way to really create an explosion out in the environment. If you look at the picture over on the right-hand side, you can see a coral. I believe that's a type of brain coral, and it is actually releasing fertilized eggs into the water. And you can see it looks like snowflakes just spewing out into the water. And they do this... Um, you know, without any parental care or anything, once those eggs are out into the ocean, they're gone. And they just release millions of them at a time with hopes that just a few of them get a chance to survive to adulthood. Now, that may seem somewhat strange to us because we are not our selected species as humans. We're what you call K-selected. K-selected species are in mammals are always K-selected, usually invest more heavily in fewer offspring. So we, have, we don't have millions of babies, which is probably a good thing you're thinking. We only have a few, and we care for those offspring um, diligently to ensure that they survive to adulthood. And you can see this nicely illustrated here with this endearing picture of a polar bear and, and her cub. Uh, she's certainly investing a lot of her time and care into making sure that that cub is provided for. Continuing with populations, and a population is always going to have a particular habitat. And a habitat is a place where a particular population lives. The habitat for the polar bear, since we we're talking about it, would be the Arctic. They live in the North Pole and the Arctic Ocean, and also in northern Canada. A niche is the role that a population plays in a particular ecosystem. So in the polar ecosystem, the polar bear plays the role as the apex predator or top predator. So that is its functional role or its job, you could say, in a habitat. Now, a niche is determined by factors such as resource distribution and competition. So as of right now, nothing has come in to competitively exclude the polar bear from the Arctic Ocean. It is the top dog or top bear in this region. One of the concerns with melting ice caps is that maybe they might be weakened to the point where another predator could come in and outcompete them or competitively exclude them from the Arctic Ocean. And they might have to migrate uh, further south into Canada. Now, no two species can occupy the same niche for a long period of time. And that's why. Uh, we were referring to if the polar bears have to migrate down further south into Canada, they may likely get into a competitive battle over resources with grizzly bears and other bears that are uh, in northern Canada. Now, let's talk a bit about biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variation of life forms within an ecosystem. It indicates the health of a given ecosystem, so it's rather from, uh, important. The distribution of biodiversity is not even globally, and you might realize this. It's usually higher in the tropics, like in tropical rainforests, as you can see here in, in certain areas of the world. This is where you have hotbeds of biodiversity within the tropical rainforests, whereas if you look up at the poles where it's cooler, you have much less biodiversity in these regions, okay? So it's often that there's a lot of biodiversity in the tropics, but populations of individual organisms are low. But in the poles, you have little biodiversity, but you have a lot of krill and a lot of penguins and such like that. Now, biodiversity has steadily increased in Earth's history, except for the periods of mass extinctions. So we can kind of see that it has increased, but then every once in a while, there's a mass extinction. And there was a one somewhat recently here, but it continues to increase. We get more and more species uh, as time goes by. And also, right now, I, I'd like to tell you how many species exist on Earth, but it's rather difficult to, to identify how many actually exist. Because if you look at this graph, and we focus here just on insects, that says insects, I realize that's small. But this is the number that we've actually observed. This is the estimated number that we have yet to actually discover. So certainly biodiversity is a hot topic going forward uh, in science.